Hey guys, we are back on the John Deere bearing replacement project. Um, I didn't get any footage of pressing the old bearings out, putting the new ones in. Um, it was a little, it took me a while to figure out how to get the thing to fit in the press. So it just, once it fit in, I just kind of went with it. So, bring you along for this part. Um, bearings weren't too expensive. I was thankful for that. Uh, about two hundred dollars. Thanks, what the bearings were. So that wasn't bad. So we're going to anti-seize everything up here. Because you never know, we might have to take the going thing apart again. So. Yep, needle tap tap. So anyway. And I'm not beating on them bearings. There's a floor jack underneath there, pushing up on the shaft. So. get the socket and impact. We'll tighten that baby up. Actually might just get another get another washer and put on there too. I'll bring you back. Alright, I got a new washer. If I put a lock washer on top, I'm not sure it's gonna draw down far enough to be able to get the Carter key through the castle nut, so this is going to get anti seize too. Just in case we got to take it back apart. Probably put, yep, we can put another washer on there. I think we're just going to put a lock washer on it. If I can draw it down tight enough to get the card key in it. Oh man. Right there. Got her. Spins nice. Had a little bit of wobble. It's because all them bolts aren't tight. So. Alrighty. Got that part. I 
Well, let's see what we can do next. You gotta find a Carter key. I'll bring you back. All right. I'm not sure how long that SD card's gonna last because for some reason it usually has 17 minutes worth of uh, time on it, and today it's only got seven minutes worth of time on it. So. I'm not sure what's going on with it. I don't think it uh, deleted all the. Uh, I wonder why that went in this one. I don't think it deleted all the last pictures off of it. There we go. It's got those two. Oh. Alright guys, well we've almost worked ourselves into a standstill. Um, I got the adjustment rod, you can see there, and adjustment sled the whole way back there on that drive sprocket because I want to shorten the chain up. The chain needed some lengths taken out of it and this adjuster was slid the whole way out. So I've got that pushed back. I got this one slid the whole way up which shortens the uh, the uh, belt up and I had what I thought was practically a new set of belts for this thing hanging on the wall because there used to be two of these motors around here and when the other one got junk the belts got kept and the belts on this one are junk so they're supposed to be C85s so and then you can see we got about uh, three inches, three inches of overlap. So uh, I marked it right here. I pulled it a little tighter and cut this belt in two. Well, I cut this belt in two so I could overlap it. And uh, measures 88 inches. So I guess it has stretched because I thought this was. I thought this was not was the outside circumference was 85 inches, I thought. Now honestly, I thought we used to put C84s on these. I guess you can see that, yeah. So, and uh, you can see these belts were getting getting bad and I wasn't going to put them back on anyway. Like I said, I thought we had another set. And you can see, I think right there at the end of my thumb, right there, how much these belts overlap. So I'm going to do a little research, get a new set of belts for this thing. Uh, so, kind of at a standstill there, I got the uh, gearbox is bolted back down. The blade is put back on the, the mower. Spindle, while I was underneath there, I went ahead and put that on. So I'm going to put the uh, PTO shaft back together here. And that's probably about all I'm going to get done today. I need to order... Uh, that tire over there was flat. Well, the, the tube went bad in it. Uh, broke at the valve stem. This one here is flat again. This one used to hold air for about six months. About every six months you'd have to put air in it. It ain't holding it that long anymore. So I guess I'm going to have to get two tubes. Um, here's something. I need to loosen that nut on the back of there and let that thing slip a little bit and then tighten it back up because uh, we all know they freeze up, rust up, and you know what happens when that when that rusts up? It uh, pretty much explodes or tears your PTO shafts up. That's why this one's got uh, there's a twist in the PTO shaft. 
And I can tell you why. Because it didn't like being hooked to a red tractor and hitting a groundhog hole. It twisted it. It twisted it the first day. I put that shaft on. Which did not make me a happy camper. Actually, I hit a groundhog hole where the ones I made the video of uh, destroying the groundhog holes. That was where I hit a hole at with it. So we're going to put the PTO shaft back on. And then I guess that would be it for this first day. Everything we're doing. So. I don't remember if I had washers in it. I don't remember. Alright. Well, that's about it. For the moment, that's pretty much all I can do till we get some belts and some inner tubes. So, um, I did not get any video of uh, pressing the bearings out. Uh, I was having a hard time getting the shaft, the bearing housing, and everything to fit in my shock press. So, finally, once I got it blocked in, it, it uh, wouldn't slide on me. It wasn't very long I had it pressed apart. So I apologize, there's no video of uh, re putting new bearings in that spindle, on that spindle and in that holder. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so I'll bring you back with a part three. Uh, we'll get, uh, get some belts ordered, some tubes, and uh, get this thing uh, wrapped up because uh, i got other projects I need to be on and... Actually, I want to use it. I got some little bush hog and I want to do this spring uh, before things start to really grow. So, uh, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe. And give me the, uh, the thumbs up. So, uh, alright, that's it for this one. Catch you guys on another one.